I want to stress that the FBI has a long memory and a broad reach. Agents and our partners are on the streets investigating leads not only here in the D.C. area, but also across the country through the FBI's 56 field offices. So even, like I've said before, so even if you've left D.C., agents from our local field offices will be knocking on your door if we find out that you are part of the criminal activity at the Capitol. But before we do this, this is your opportunity to come forward. One of the real evil people, most people don't even know his name, but I know Darren Beatty knows his name. He's one of the best, if not the best journalists in the country right now. Joining me now, Darren Beatty with Revolver News. Darren, for people who don't understand this, have never seen that bald-headed dork in their life, will you please explain exactly who this guy is and the things he's done against this country? Well, Mr. D'Antuono is an interesting figure. He has a decorated resume replete with intimate involvement in several uh, dirty tricks and really scandalous operations against Trump and his supporters and the American people generally. Uh, Revolver.News first brought his name to national attention in the context of his role in Michigan. He oversaw the Detroit field office and uh, of the FBI and its uh, entrapment operation now completely disgraced and discredited um, known publicly as the Whitmer kidnapping plot, the so-called plot to kidnap Whitmer. And after overseeing this entrapment operation, Mr. D'Antonio, of all the people in the nation through the various field offices that Christopher Ray, the FBI director, could have handpicked for the coveted position running the Washington field office, D'Antuono is picked by Christopher Wray to lead that Washington field office in the months leading up to and the months after January 6. Among other things, D'Antuono becomes the public face of the pipe bomb investigation, these so-called January 6 pipe bombs. And Revolver.News has done a tremendous amount of groundbreaking research exposing and really discrediting so many different parts of the official narrative regarding this pipe bomb um, from the circumstances under which the pipe bomb near the RNC was found to the circumstances under which the pipe bomb near the DNC was not found to a forensic analysis of the surveillance footage provided. For instance, we proved without question that the FBI is withholding critical footage that would depict the pipe bomb or actually planting the bomb. We proved definitively that the surveillance footage provided by the FBI had been artificially tampered with, such as to reduce the frame rate to a level that it's impossible to identify who this person is. So from every angle, we've exposed this pipe bomb hoax that I call one of the two smoking guns of the January 6th Fed surrection. I think as part of this reporting that we've done, D'Antuona did something very unusual. He just quietly resigned from this coveted Washington position that's usually understood to be a stepping stone to the uh, most rarefied offices in the Hoover building of the FBI. And this is where the story really starts to get interesting. So, you know, a guy who seems to be a villain who is involved in all of these dirty operations, the public face of the pipe bomb investigation, who quietly and shamefully retires uh, to uh, a a life as an accountant as KPMG, he volunteers himself before the Judiciary Committee. And what he says is very interesting. First of all, he talked about the Mar-a-Lago raid, which happened under his tenure. Mar-a-Lago raid, as people probably know, is the raid that serves as the basis for the latest illegitimate rounds of indictment against President Trump. Now, what he said about this is very curious. He came out and basically said more or less words, the Mar-a-Lago raid was illegitimate and the FBI contravened normal protocol in many different instances in a way that he found totally objectionable. And he outlined those instances. And that was very interesting. This is unusual for an FBI guy to do that is one thing, but for this guy of all people, but then it gets even more surprising from my point of view. He actually answers questions about the pipe bomb investigation, very uncomfortable questions that have emerged as a result of Revolver.News' reporting. 
Congressman Massey asked him a number of questions. Keep in mind, he doesn't work for the FBI anymore, and he had every opportunity to say, oh, I can't comment on an ongoing investigation. You know the obfuscations that these guys have available. If they don't want to answer a question, they won't. But he did, and I was frankly shocked by it. Now, to get the full story, people should go to revolver.news and read it, but I want to give some of the bombshells from this interrogation, one of them in particular. Massey asked him, we know that the FBI has been using geofencing technologies in order to identify January 6 participants and arrest and charge them. Did you use geofencing capabilities in order to try at least to identify this pipe bomber? Because it's actually a layup for that kind of technology because you need a person's location and a time that they were there. The more crowded it is, the more confounding variables there are. But according to the surveillance footage, we have a specific person at a specific place specific time and no one else around him, it should be the easiest thing in the world to get the geofencing. And at this point, when questioned, the Antoine gets a little bit clammy. Body language starts to shift a little bit. He can't make eye contact. And he says, you know, we did try geofencing for the pipe bomber, but the telecom company in question came back to us and said, for this specific time and place, for this specific request, our data is corrupted. Now, what are the chances of that? The dog ate the geofencing data. The same dog that ate the Epstein tapes, the same dog that ate the tapes of John Doe number two in the sham investigation of the Oklahoma City bombing. There's a very hungry dog for a very particular type of surveillance footage. And this dog is a government employee, I suspect. And in this case, the dog ate the geofencing data, which is remarkable. And it was so weird and so uh, manifestly suspicious that D'Antuono, just as an act of desperation, said, no, I don't want to encourage any conspiracy theories, guys. But what can I tell you? This is severely unusual. All the other requests were fine, but for some reason, for this specific place, this specific time, the data is corrupted. Now, of course, if they really wanted to, there are many other different ways they could have gotten this data. In fact, I'll tell you here that in my own capacity as a researcher at revolver.news, I tried to get geofencing data. There's one way that the law enforcement people do it. They can go directly to the telecom companies. There's another way to do it is to go through a handful of big data firms that collect geofencing information through people's apps usage. If your app is plugged into a GPS, connected GPS, that's an alternative mechanism. There are a handful of big data centers that actually sell that information, which should make every American citizen feel entirely comfortable, right? So through a proxy, because I'm a known political quantity and I didn't think they would give me anything, but through a proxy who is totally clean politically, not known to be uh, involved in any kind of political uh, affairs, um, and in this space, approached these three different firms and said, hey, can, can we get this? Can we do some business? And in each case, initially, the answer was very receptive, very warm. Of course, we'd love to take your money. That's what we're here for. This is our business. But then in each case, one day later, sometimes two days later, there was a response of a much different tone saying, basically, Tari, this isn't something we can do. So this just gives people a sense. I think anyone paying attention to the January 6th story generally can see that this is one of the most sensitively guarded narratives that the regime is trying to protect. They go nuts when anyone challenges it, particularly when they talk about Ray Epps or the pipe bomb. And in this case, the fact that some agency went to the lengths of corrupting or deleting or doing something to the geofencing data in order to prevent public knowledge about who this person is um, really, I think, says something amazing. And there were many other pretty astonishing revelations that emerged from the interrogation of the Antuono in the context of this pipe bomb investigation. You want to watch our special on George Washington? It's freaking awesome. But you can all you have to do is become a First TV supporter. That gives you access to all of our specials on demand, and it's cake. 
All you have to go to, to is thefirsttv.com slash support. Thefirsttv.com slash support. Become a supporter. Enjoy learning about George Washington.